Sometimes strange things happen. Sometimes strange things happen that make you question everything you know. Is that too much of a stretch? I hope not. The incident I want to discuss was one of those times. I reckon it was about six years ago. I was just getting started with my professional surfing career and had just moved to Byron Bay, Australia. Byron Bay is a surfer's paradise. Think crystal clear water, consistently great waves and a laid back surfer culture. It's the whole package. Normally the regular crew and I would be out on the water as soon as the sun was up, but this day was a bit different. It wasn't a sunny day. Overcast, I guess. Not ugly, but more like moody. The kind of day that just makes you want to rebel against everything. And so, with the encouragement of a few too many espressos, I decided to take on the ocean anyway. I've always lived by the philosophy of surfs up, no matter the weather. And this was far from the roughest weather I'd faced. The waves were wild and choppy, but to me, that only added to the thrill. So I suited up and paddled out into the storm, leaving caution on the shore. It was in these first few minutes that I noticed them, the dolphins. Dolphins aren't exactly an unusual sight in Byron Bay, but on a grim day like the one I described, they would typically seek shelter in calmer waters. But there they were, a pod of dolphins, frolicking just beyond the break line. It was surreal, like something out of a dream. I remember the feeling, a kind of humbling sense of awe and absolute joy. This was why I was there after all. Surfing was about the adventure, about getting lost in the moment, about sharing a wave with nature. Adjusting my board, I paddled out deeper, grinning from ear to ear. I could see a set of waves farther out, the kind of set you live for as a surfer. I was already imagining the adrenaline pumping, the salt water spraying in my face, the cheers from the beach. Blissfully oblivious to the strange behavior of the dolphins, I was so focused on the waves that I didn't notice anything else. As the first wave of the set rolled in, the water's surface seemed to twitch just for a moment. Putting it down to the stormy conditions, I dismissed it though it left a strange feeling in my gut. It was a sensation like a note in a song that just seems slightly off tune. Not thinking much of it, I rode that wave in, the thrill of surfing momentarily brushing off that odd sense. But as I was heading back out, I began to notice things. The dolphins that had been joyful, celebrating the storm with their playful jumps and flips, had started moving in a strange, almost frantic manner. You'd think they were fleeing something, but in those conditions, I couldn't make out what. Never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined what was about to happen next. I don't know if you've ever been faced with something so terrifying that your mind simply refuses to process it. That's what it felt like. Suddenly, the churning water around me appeared to boil and twist, like something massive was about to break the surface. And that's exactly what happened. This thing was enormous. As long as a few buses put together and thick, very thick. It had a long body like a serpent's, I guess. The skin was rough and scaled, glistening with the salt water. It was like nothing I had ever seen before. The image of it, full of evil and purely terrifying. Its snout, filled with enormous jagged teeth, opened wide as it practically roared, creating a wave in my direction. The shock of it all frustrated my attempts at paddling, and my board capsized, no match for the titanic creature. Now, I'm not one to believe in sea monsters, but I'll tell you, in that moment, every old sailor's tale about leviathans and krakens came rushing back. I tried to swim away. I moved my arms and legs the best I could, given the circumstances, but my mind was a chaos of adrenaline and fear. As I floundered in the water, I felt a sudden push as a dolphin shot past me, a whole pod of them darting around the colossal intruder. Were they trying to defend me, distract it, or were they merely in as much panic as I was? I can't say. What I can say is that their presence gave me just enough time to recover my board and paddle like a man possessed. 
I kept expecting that any second a giant maw would close around me, or a massive flipper would knock me from my board. But it didn't. I have no idea how, but I made it back to shore, exhaustion pulling me into darkness even as the storm started to recede, leaving behind just the rhythm of the ocean. The following days saw me contemplating a lot about life, the universe, and the depths of the ocean. Was it a guardian of the sea, awoken by our disruptive climate change? Was it just an abnormally gigantic creature? Or did I experience an extremely close encounter with a true sea monster, something that's never meant to see the light of day? I still surf, but never again in a storm. Every roll of the waves, every shadow under the water, it sends my heart racing. I found a healthy respect for the ocean and her untold secrets. I've become another person, adding my story to the annals of local lore of oceanic monstrosities seen by that crazy surfer. There's no moral to this story, just a whole lot of unanswered questions. But if there's one thing I learned, it's that the sea is a lot deeper, a lot older, and a lot stranger than we could ever imagine. And it doesn't like to be disturbed. About five years ago, I decided to volunteer for a cleanup gig at Yellowstone National Park. My dad always told me that we have duties beyond our work, such as looking after the environment. I was a plumber, but also cared about nature. The park was always a peaceful place, and I wanted to keep it that way, fresh and clean. On that day, it was a usual chilly fall morning, with the smell of fallen leaves everywhere. A lot of people showed up for the event, all spread out in the park, equipped with trash pickers and strong bags. The work was tiring, but felt good. Whenever I had a rest, I would enjoy the beautiful views of Yellowstone. Then stuff felt different. First off, there was this massive shaking of the ground that freaked out all the birds. I recall turning around startled, feeling my heart banging like crazy. You could feel a weird vibe in the air. It suddenly got really quiet in a creepy way. The smell that came next was terrible, like dirt and rotten trash combined with a little bit of sulfur. I've dealt with bad smells before in my work, but this one was worse. And what happened next, well, it was hard to explain because it just didn't make sense. I heard a strange noise, similar to a radio changing stations, and saw a blinding light. Then something unclear in the dim light smashed through the trees, making a mess. I immediately thought, damn, a plane just crashed. But the thing's shape and its weird movement, it just didn't seem right. I couldn't figure out what was moving in the dim light far off in the distance. It was sort of like something from a movie. All I could tell was that it was dark and somehow felt really intense. I was pretty scared. But as I was standing there, this thing began to shrink until it was about the size of a person. Then something else happened. I heard a voice, but it wasn't like a regular voice. It was as if it was in my head. Someone spoke in a language I couldn't understand. Everything looked fuzzy, with the trees and sky spinning around. I felt a headache coming on fast, and the last thing I saw was a pair of scary black eyes. Then I blacked out. I woke up in a park ranger station, some other people who were cleaning up had found me knocked out, just lying there in the open. They thought I'd passed out from working too hard, but I knew there was something more to it, something I just couldn't explain. It got weirder after that. I felt both scared and curious, but wanted to see where the object landed. I was hoping it was just a satellite or maybe a drone. And so the next day, I set out for the same area. I comforted myself thinking about how there must be a logical explanation while walking through the forest. Then I came to a clearing, and in the middle of it was the object that had fallen from the sky the day before. And I'm going to tell you the truth. It looked like some kind of spaceship with a metal surface that seemed to change and move like liquid. There was this kind of low, steady noise coming from it that made the forest ground shake a bit. As I got nearer, 
I saw that it had left a burnt path in the shrubs when it came down. I noticed trash like wrappers and a squished water bottle on the ground, probably from our cleanup event. Man, the smell was so strong it made me feel sick. I began to get a headache, a weird throbbing that seemed to match the hum. I moved a bit closer and then I saw them, the greys. They just popped up, seemingly coming right from the craft. They were shorter than me, really skinny, and had big heads with weird black eyes. I couldn't stop looking at them. I don't remember seeing a nose or mouth, just a smooth area where their face should be. Their skin was gray and kind of shiny, like wet stones in a river. When I was looking, I heard it. In my head, lots of voices chatting, I couldn't understand them, but they were clearly there. I felt dizzy, like everything around me was spinning. I felt really lousy and totally freaked out, like I'd been caught by something hunting me. I fell down and saw these guys touching the spaceship. One of them looked at me and I'm certain he said in English, keep going. After that, I remember nothing. It was totally dark. When I tried to tell people what I'd seen, all I got were odd silences and shrugs. They even laughed, a lot. Even weeks later, they were still making jokes about what I went through. I'm sure about what I saw, even after all these years. I'm certain it was real, and I wasn't seeing things. Sometimes when I'm alone, I think I can still smell that awful stench. I just want my story to touch someone who's gone through the same. I'm not looking for approval, but I don't want to be the only one dealing with this. There are so many things in the world that we don't understand. ATV riding in Moab, Utah is really something else, especially with all the towering red rocks around. I'm pretty into adventures and love a good thrill. Driving over tough paths, dealing with the hot desert and feeling the cool wind is my kind of jam. One day, I was out on my ATV going through a hard trail. All around me were these beautiful red canyons and rock formations. I was really attracted to the stunning scenery around me. That's where things started to change unexpectedly. I was casually riding my ATV along the edge of a hill, listening to the engine buzz and feeling the tires roll over the gravel trail. As I made a turn, stones got kicked up from under the tires, but the strong shocks on the ATV handled most of the bumps and rocks. I was so into the ride that I didn't catch the quiet at first. I also didn't really notice it was suddenly cold, which was weird because it was a sunny day. Usually, even in the desert, you'd hear some birds, see bugs, or see a random rabbit or coyote. But that afternoon, it felt as if the desert was waiting for something. You know, I should have realized something was wrong when that coyote jumped out from the bush and scared me. You see them all the time in Moab, but this one was different. It had really dark fur, kind of like looking at the night sky. It moved as fast as a cheetah, easily matching the speed of my ATV. I'll always remember its eyes, though. I saw them in my side mirror. They were red and glowing, making a sharp contrast with its dark fur. I've never seen a coyote with those kinds of eyes. I had this weird feeling that there was something off about the animal. It felt like it was watching me and it gave me goosebumps, like its red eyes were following me. I felt cold all of a sudden and I didn't exactly know why. I decided to rev the engine to get away from it as fast as I could, but it kind of ruined the fun of my ride. The desert was quiet, and I felt a bit lonely like something weird was about to happen. I didn't know just how strange things were about to get that crazy afternoon out in the middle of those red rocks. You know, after you meet someone strange, you start imagining things. But that day in Moab, with those red eyes still stuck in my head, I felt like I'd seen something really out of the ordinary. So, I was riding my ATV pretty fast through this rough trail with big red rocks everywhere. I had no idea what was about to happen that would make me remember Moab, and there was this weird coyote. Anyway, I kept going even though I was feeling a bit weird, not knowing what was ahead. Then, out of nowhere, I noticed something in the distance. It was like a person 
moving in a really strange way. Even though the day was blistering hot, I could see that this figure was coming towards me. I got really nervous all of a sudden during the ride. My heart was racing like crazy. When I got closer, I could see this really skinny, crazy looking person with messy hair all the way down to their shoulders. But then in a few seconds, they looked different. Like when you see those fake images in the desert heat, the person began to change right before my eyes, their skin moving around like it was alive. I was too stunned to breathe when I realized they were turning into that same black coyote I just ran away from. Seeing it scared me so bad, I almost fell off my ATV. I could hear this coyote's howl, a creepy, weird sound that echoed throughout the desert and felt like it was bouncing around in my head. I was scared stiff with those scary red eyes staring at me. I couldn't believe it, so I rubbed my eyes and then sped off trying to get as far away as possible from that thing that turned back into a coyote. The ATV engine was loud as it went over the rocks and sand, a sound that grounded me in the midst of my freaky experience. Once I was certain I'd left the creature behind, I stopped on a hillside to catch my breath. So, I was sitting there, catching my breath, right? Suddenly I wasn't scared anymore, I was just interested. Like, you wouldn't believe me if I told you but I saw this person change into a coyote. Crazy, I know. When I finally calmed down, I remembered this word from somewhere, skinwalker. I remember that once I heard this old Native American story about a witch who could turn into an animal. Could that be what I bumped into? Was there some kind of mythical monster from Native American legends hanging around here in Moab, Utah? I hopped on my ATV and rode home my mind full of questions. That day really changed the way I saw things. I was looking for an adventure, but this was way more than what I had asked for. However, I started to appreciate and respect these unexpected things I was learning. And being in that desert full of red rocks, I sort of felt the vibe of old stories and it made me think about how many mysteries there are in the world. So, I went for a basic ATV ride and ended up having an unforgettable experience. It made me realize we really don't know a lot about the world. After my second year of college, I got a job as a night shift lifeguard at Myrtle Beach in South Carolina during the summer. It was tough staying awake while everyone else was sleeping, but the pay was okay, and I got to be near the sea, which I love. The beach had a totally different feel at night. It was quieter and kind of spooky without all the people around. A beach at night is pretty, but it can also feel a bit creepy. One night in late June, I was in the middle of my midnight shift. There was hardly anyone on the beach, just a random person walking around or a lost sandal here and there. The night was clear, and the moon was really bright. My job included getting the beach ready for the next day. I'd tidy up leftover things, clean the chairs and tables, arrange the lifeguard stand, and basically make sure the sand was safe. That night, I was doing the usual stuff, with a few glances at the peaceful ocean and its small waves. I plopped down in the lifeguard chair, clutching my flashlight, my eyes darting between the long expanse of the beach and the continuous ocean. The noise of the waves and the wind made the night feel spooky. Then, around 2 a.m., things started getting weird. So I was reading and heard this soft humming sound from the sea. Suddenly I felt cold, which was weird, because the summer wind was really warm up until then. I had a look around to check if someone was maybe in the water needing help. With the help of my flashlight, all I could see was the pretty sight of the sea and the waves hitting the shore over and over. Then I noticed a dim light in the sea mist, kind of like a bit of moonlight above the water. This light sort of changed shape, but, well, it's hard to put into words. It looked kind of see-through, like looking at someone in a foggy mirror, and it was about the size of a person. It gave me the creeps. It was weird how still it was compared to the constant moving sea. I started to feel a sort of damp cold around me, and for no reason at all, I felt scared. But anyone in my situation wouldn't have left. 
not without understanding what was going on. I felt like something weird was happening but couldn't put my finger on it. Then I heard it, a quiet voice like someone was calling for help in the wind. I woke up suddenly, super focused. I felt like running, but my job kept me in place. I had to check if someone needed help. I grabbed my walkie-talkie and started describing the situation, speaking low and fast, while keeping an eye on the weird, lit-up figure. Then there was some static, followed by complete silence. You could tell I was nervous from my voice as I tried to describe this weird stuff happening. I was holding onto my chair so hard. Even though it was a summer night, a random, chilly wind came out of nowhere. Everything just felt so unreal. I was standing there, pretty nervous, still looking at that unknown shadow. As I kept staring at it, it started to look more clear and defined. Over time, I could really make out it was a woman, a kind of see-through, but also slightly lit up. She looked different, like you couldn't really make out her face, like you're trying to remember someone's face, but it's fading. She moved smoothly over the water, not bothered by the waves at all. She moved in a spooky, peaceful way. It looked like she was trying to get to the shore to reach out to me. I heard it again in the quiet, that faint, panicked sound, but now it was more distinct. It was a woman. I can't forget that creepy feeling. It was like something was giving me goosebumps. Her scream was mixing with the noise of the waves and the trees rustling. I called my boss fast, but he just told me to ring up the police. You could tell he wasn't sure. This was all happening around three in the morning. When the cops got here, the woman, ghost or whatever it was, had already vanished. I could tell they didn't believe me from their faces. I knew my story must have sounded nuts, but there's more to this tale. That summer, I started researching Myrtle Beach's past and found a sad story about a lady who drowned there about 50 years ago, around the end of June. The details were creepy. She was on a night walk on the beach, there were rumors of a lullaby, and then suddenly she was gone. Now that I think about it, it seems I saw a ghost that summer night. The mysterious woman, the whispers, the feeling of fear, it all makes sense. Maybe she just wanted to tell her story. It changed how I view the beach, and life and death too. I'm usually a doubter, but something's different after that experience. It was really scary and sad. Even after all this time, I can't stop thinking about her story. I just feel so bad for her. After that, the sound of the waves and the beach just reminds me of that awful night. That experience showed me we've got a lot to learn about the world. This story's from a while back when I lived in the mountains of West Virginia. I didn't have many neighbors, and to tell you the truth, I liked the silence. Most evenings, I'd just chill by a fire or under the stars. My boxer, Bruno, is always with me. We typically walk around the winding trails of the area, which is a nice switch from my daily routine at work. It's peaceful, just Bruno, me, and the scenery. These walks are a nice way to just clear my head, get a workout, and hang out with my dog. As dogs often are, Bruno was a big fan of nature, just like me. So, on one of those regular evenings, we headed to our favorite path right when the sun began to set. Bruno ran ahead, jumping as the leaves crunched under his feet, and it made me laugh. It was like our own private road, hardly any tourists around. The evening sun shining off the mountains really caught our attention, and we'd keep going, Bruno running around, while the forest's scent and noise had their usual calming effect on me. Every day, we got to know the forest a little better, which kept our walks interesting. I remember that day, just tossing sticks for Bruno and enjoying the quiet of the woods. It was a nice, quiet evening like many we've had, I was picking up another stick for Bruno when I noticed a weird smell. Living out in the sticks, you get used to all kinds of smells. There was wildlife everywhere, but this was something else. A nasty smell, so foul that I was totally confused by it. 
Bruno also noticed something. He stopped running and started sniffing around. Looking at him, it seemed like he was on to something. I quickly leashed him up. He's way better at tracking things than I could ever be. But today, he was obviously bothered by the smell, too. To keep things calm, I pulled his leash a bit to show we should carry on. The smell kept getting stronger, though, and then we heard it. A deep, scary growl that bounced around through the trees. That's when I started getting freaked out. Bruno started growling and arching his back. I got this sick feeling in my stomach because that sound was pretty scary. Bruno only makes it when something really bad is happening. Without thinking, I latched onto his collar and peered into the growing fog. That's when I noticed it. Despite the fog, I saw a huge figure in the weak moonlight. It was gigantic, much taller than us. It had wide shoulders, strong legs, and long arms that seemed to end in claws. It kind of looked like a dog with its long head and body, but it was all weird standing up on its back legs, almost like a person's. Plus, it was covered in thick, rough fur all over. Its eyes were a sharp yellow color, looking super intense through the fog. Seriously, it freaked me out. It was like being hit with an icy, cold stare. It took me a second to get my head straight. I had to think fast. It was either run or face trouble. All that mattered now was getting out of here. I pulled Bruno's leash and started running, praying I was still going in the right direction despite the shock. The noise of breaking branches really freaked me out. I didn't turn around, just hoping that whatever was behind me didn't care enough to chase me. I took off running thinking only about staying alive. I had no idea where I was heading. I was just running on autopilot. Fighting his fear, Bruno took charge and led us back home, which looked so comforting with its lights on. As soon as we could see the house, I started thinking we might actually be safe. We ran in and slammed the door shut. I just stood there in the quiet living room, trying to make sense of the scary stuff we had just got away from. That night, our house felt like a safe haven from the scary stuff outside. I kept my dog Bruno next to me because he made me feel safer. We were really tired but couldn't fall asleep. I was still trying to get my head around the fact that the trail we usually take had such scary stuff going on. After that day, things just felt different when we went for our usual walks. We never saw that beast again. But I can't forget how big it was, those spooky eyes and that deep growl that filled the forest. It was so freaky, I wouldn't want even my worst enemy to experience it. But now, I've got this creepy story to tell about how Bruno and I ran into this dog man in the mountains of West Virginia.